Wendy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. And now we're pleased to bring you our feature presentation. everybody <laughs> I'm glad to be here with you guys today and I hope to make you smile shout out, shout out to the sick the shut in the otherwise depressed this show is especially uh, one for you because uh, somewhere in here maybe you'll um, just smile just for a minute for a minute and then my job is done thank you Farrah Franklin's coming over today you know her Destiny's Child well, yeah I could think of more than 10 questions to ask her I could think of more than just one simple break worth of information that I could get from her. Maybe she can stick around. Farrah Franklin can, maybe. Uh, in the meantime, we've got everybody to talk about, and still Dave Chappelle. Plus, whatever you want to throw into the mix today, 866-GET-WENDY. There's a lot going on. I mean, you know, 866-GET-WENDY. Um, and, of course, the fax machine is open at 866-WENDY-FAX. I sit right next to the fax machine. Love a good faxing. It is what it is, people. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Hey now. All right. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the show. And we're good to go. I see a couple new faces. Well, not a couple. I see a new face around here. Yes. Who's the Asian chick? She's a, a, one of our new interns. Brand new. I like her. I like her already. Yeah. She just went to um, get me a Diet Pepsi. What's her name again? Adalia. Adalia. Let me write that down so I have it correctly. All right. I got Adalia here today. Taryn, queen of all interns. And, of course, Zoe, the virgin from Howard. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. That's how I identify you, Zoe. I won't always do that. But I just virgin. had to today. <laughs> now, uh, Taryn, where did you pick up Adalia? Here she comes. Never mind. Come on in. Let's not talk about her. Let's wait. <laughs> Thank you, Adalia. You're welcome. Adalia, where'd we find you from? Uh, Caldwell College. What's that? It's in New Jersey. In Caldwell, New Jersey, down the yes. street from the old original Pancake House? Um, I think so. <laughs> Up the street from TJ Maxx? Uh, Marshalls? Yes. 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 That's my stomping ground. That's where you, you live on campus? Yes, I do. Oh, we'll see each other around. Oh, okay. Do you have a car? Yes. Oh, babysitter. <laughs> oh. I'm a nanny, too. <laughs> Shut up! Wow. Are you? Yes. You're a nanny, and now you're an intern here on the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you live with? Um, do I live with? The, your your bosses? Um, no. Are, no, I used to, but they um don't have me anymore. They got rid of me. Are you looking for a new job? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, <shit>. oh. <laughs> and you're a living? Yes. 
Ooh. Yeah. I need a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's looking at y'all booty. In trouble. <laughs> no, but look at that. And so what are you studying in school? Communications. Look That's at you. Yeah. It could be like a nanny, a nanny apprentice. I mean, there could be mm-hmm. there's a, a few different ways you can work this and still keep Mrs. Lopez. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Yes, it's a whole other language to be learned. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> are you are you Japanese? Well, yes, Japanese. Quite Japanese. Quite Japanese. Oh, Sayaka Samas. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you. That's a Dahlia, everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I like it. Um. Anyway, let's go to the telephone. Hello. Hi. It's Wendy. How are you? Fine. Well, nothing like a downer. First call out of the day. What's going on? Um, I want to know when your album comes out. Oh, June 28th. Oh. Yeah. Thank you for calling, young lady. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. She sounded two blades away from the... <laughs> away from the final jump. Hello? Wendy? Yes? Wendy Williams? Uh-oh. Yes. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. I only try to get through to you about 50 times every single day. Oh, really? Is this your first time? Excuse me? This is your first time getting through? Yes, this is my first time getting through. Perseverance. Say. And and I'd like to thank you, number one, for maturing my radio ear. <sighs> thank you. Which you have definitely done. Thank uh, you. I would also like to thank you very much for allowing me to believe that it's okay to be 30-something. <sighs> Oh, by far, of course, yes. And, because, and sexy and smart. I have and a very smart. hard time with the aging process. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're allowing me to understand that. And I just figured you hadn't mentioned anything about um, Ben and Jennifer I'm being about pregnant. To talk, I'm about to talk about, I'm about, we're about to get to that. Okay. Okay. Okay, I just figured I'd mention it to you, but I, actually, I just wanted to thank you very, very much. Thank, oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being there. Okay, I'll... Listen. <laughs> yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good bye-bye. That was nice. What an interesting thing. Thank you for uh, helping me through the aging process. Yeah, I think we help one another. I mean, you all help me, too. Hello? Is this Miss Wendy? This is me. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> How are you oh doing? Oh, my God. I'm being so ghetto. Miss Wendy. <laughs> hey. How are you? I'm doing well. That is so good. I love you, Miss Wendy, but I'm going to get to the point because I know you don't like for us to be calling with all that groupy love. Yeah, well, I mean, I enjoy it, but I do like when you get to the point. Okay, I'm getting to the point. Miss Wendy, mm-hmm. I have this friend, right? And he and I have been kicking it since, like, September, right, Miss Wendy? Uh-huh. I have gotten him out of jail, like, two times. And he lives in Atlanta, and we go to school in Orangeburg. Okay, this is South Carolina. They listen on Hot 103.9. Yes, ma'am. Hot 103. I saw you when you came to the book signing. Yes, thank you okay. for supporting. I'm always supporting Wendy. Okay, Miss Wendy. So, he um used to, um he had a baby's mama. Uh-huh. Okay. And he had his baby mama in Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. But the baby passed away. Oh. So, he ended up getting his baby mama with him. Oh, okay. Right? Yes. So, I have to respect their friendship, Mm -hmm. and I respect what they've been through. But my question is, he doesn't want to, I mean, he says that he wants to leave her alone, but he just wants to be there for her. Yeah. Where do I put my foot down? What do I say? Because I'm trying to be nice about everything and try and be lenient and say, well, you know what I'm saying? I understand because the baby just passed away in August, so it's basically brand new. Okay, let me ask you, does she have a boyfriend? See, I don't think she has a boyfriend because she called me one time, right, Miss Wendy? Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, I was his baby's mom or whatever, whatever. Okay, freeze. All right, what's your question to me? Because I'm ready with my answer. Leave him alone. Or yes. Him there? Leave him alone. You know why? Because they're still having sex and you will never <clears throat> be able to understand or almost have the right to pull them apart because they've such, suffered such a great, first of all, joy with the child, then loss. Hold on, Miss Wendy. I, I think would I'm go- like three weeks pregnant. What? Well, what you gonna do? I don't know because I believe in abortion, but I didn't want to kill his baby because he's already had a baby die. Um, without the baby, would you leave him alone or would you need me to tell you that? I don't know because the other day we we left for school and he was like, I think I'm in love with you. (coughs) And I don't know, Miss Wendy. I've been trying to get through for like months. Okay, they're telling me to get off the phone. So let me get off the phone and continue talking about your dilemma. 
Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So, I'm just thinking, you know, she mentioned getting him out of jail twice. I didn't ask her how old she was. Young lady, but you sound like, you know, young. Like, you're, you're in the do you years. Now, don't say you already have kids at home. Because I'm, I'm just picturing from your delivery, like, you're a sunshiny person. Real, you know, nice, you know, southern girl. Me, it's Wendy. And you mentioned school. And you're in school. And you're dealing with a guy. You're putting his, your money towards his bail. And now you're pregnant a couple of weeks. You said you believe in choice. But <clears throat> you want... Some 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 thing where you want to give him a child because he just lost one. If you think that's going to keep him faithful or out of jail or, or whatever, 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 you're sadly mistaken. The only way he can do things like that is if he wants to do it himself. And that is, you know, stay go I still think he's having sex with his ex. And I just think for a, a sunshiny girl like you, Miss Honey, you need to leave him alone. Now... And as for the baby, you'll have to make that choice. I mean, of course, if you have the baby, then you need to stay with him. But don't think that that's going to somehow dramatically turn his wife around, even though theoretically a baby is supposed to do things like that to, to people. But I find that that works more for women than for men. You know, like a woman has a baby, you know, she changes her wicked ways. Change your wicked ways. Hey. <laughs> Who's the first person on the fax machine who could tell me that was? Remember that song, Change Your Wicked Ways? You have to be of a certain age to get it. But, um, and I'll shout you out. I don't have anything in the prize closet. We haven't ordered any um, summer, spring stuff. And about Jennifer Garner being pregnant. Well, I am happy for Ben because um, it is clear to me that he was posing when he was with Jennifer Lopez. Like, I thought for some reason he was this cool guy all along and I just never took note to a Ben Affleck and then Jennifer just brought out the the glamour and the, I don't mean that in a gay way but you know he, they, he she judged up his whole being and I was like well I'll be damned look at Ben Affleck looking all handsome in his dark suits with the with the white shirt underneath and the, the light blue tie and stuff you know what there's nothing special about him. Now that Jen's gone, I'm looking at him with the other Jen, and I'm like, but you know what? They look happy together, Jen and Jen, Jen and Ben. So happy. she's three months along, according to my friend Teddy Casablanca um, out in Los Angeles. Um, she flew her kinfolk from West Virginia to California um, in April for her 33rd birthday party. And subsequently, that's when um, he asked her to marry him. So they got engaged there. But then Ben Affleck's reps, after finding out about the engagement, you know, we wags, they said, oh, no, 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 that's garbage. But she's still keeping her summer schedule. She's working on two movies. One, she leaves for Vancouver. Um, like any moment now to work for um, like two months up there to shoot a movie called Catch and Release. So she's going to work through it and they're going to have their baby and they will be getting married. So, I mean, what you going to do now, um, Jennifer Lopez? I know what she did. She went and cut her hair into that god awful haircut that looks cute on so many people. I just can't figure out why I don't like it on her. Maybe just because I'm not used to it. I'm not getting my eye used to it. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Adalia saw it. You saw the new haircut? Do you like it? No. D did you girls see it? Anybody? Is that what you saw? It? You like it? No. That hairstyle looks cute on so many women. But for some reason, it's just not doing it for me. I made a couple of, I made a list of a few celebrity hairs that I wanted to talk about because I don't just want to pick on Jen Lowe. By the way, I have the picture for the studio. So everybody who didn't see it, you'll get a chance to gasp or clap. I don't know which way you're going to go, but, um, you know, the phone lines are open and I'm glad to be here with you all. Can you tell? All right. How you doing? <laughs> Wendy, man. Presently, my um, husband just got discharged from the military. But now he's home, and I just want to tell him to get the f*** out. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Rachel True. Rachel, everybody, plays Mona on Half and Half. So how are you doing um, as a single woman in Hollywood? Do you live in a condo? Do you have a detached house? Um, no, I actually just bought my first house. Pool in the back? You know what? I don't have a pool. I'm going to put one in. I don't have a pool. And I thought, should I get one? Then I realized you don't go in no damn pool. Do you have five on it? I can't say that. Okay. <laughs> we'll take that as a yes. Yeah. Got him. This is it right here. Miss a day. Miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> What's up, this is Mariah.
Uh uh-uh, uh, I am not giving you a how you doing. <laughs> you just got it. Well, it's Wendy Williams' experience. Interesting. I was just reading this fax from this woman who um, I'm going to include in advice hour next hour. She's having a moral dilemma. Her man is, um, well, sick. And, you know, she's asking me, should she stay or should she go? Mm. <laughs> that's why. That's one of those moral decisions. But I know which side of the fence I'm on. Based on this fax. Just th- this relationship based on this fax. Um, shout out to How You Doing, Steve. Um, his last day of interning here on the show was yesterday. My just jack darling. Uh, my courtroom reporter for Little Kim. Um, my, my music mixer. He makes me the best classic CDs. Thank you so much, Steve. And stop by. Have a very, very nice summer. He's going back to Maryland for the summer. That's where I think he's from. And... Um, He'll be back uh, in the New York area in September. He can't come back to intern, but he can pop in like Jason does. Well, I thought he yeah. come back to intern in the fall. He wanted to. To intern? Intern? Yeah. We recycle like that, or do we start to look at them as losers if they come back a second well, time well, for a full time? Well, for... <laughs> He's still in school, though, the good ones. Well, he was good. He's still in school. Okay, then he comes back in September. How you doing? We can make our rules <laughs> as we go along up in here. That's why they call it the Wendy Williams experience. So Carlos Watson's on the phone, our darling bachelor. Hello. How you doing? Good. Carlos, you look fabulous in the June issue of Ebony. Uh-oh, they were too nice to me. You were? Wanted- uh, I tell you what, they said they've been getting a lot of emails already. And not only that, but they put you on the first page, which there are a lot of bachelors, and you get bored halfway through because you're like, okay, all these men. How do you get first page positioning with that? You go on Wendy Williams' show first. That's how I got in People magazine, and that's how the Ebony thing worked out. It's really something. You're getting a lot of pressure to hook up and get married. What's your family saying? Carlos, it's your time. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, you know what's good though. They're actually excited about this. You know, I've got two little sisters in New York right now listening to the show. Yeah, and they want in on this, Wendy. They want to come down to the studio when we finally do this and be able to uh, to have their say. Okay, we would like that because I already worked it up. We're going to have like one of those fake walls installed and then you guys are going to be having, you know, your conversation for like an hour and we'll check on you during your conversation. Carlos, there are such uh, stellar women. I can't even narrow it down to three. I've narrowed it down to five. Oh, I kind of like that. I actually like more choice rather than less choice. And I got to tell you something. Now Ebony Magazine has locked draw onto my oh. Get Carlos a Date contest. And they want to join forces with the experience oh. here. And and it, they want to pick, they want to get five. And then we're going to narrow all That's the so ten cool. down to five. But I got to tell you something. There is this fabulous Manhattan doctor that, I, you know, my personal pick. Is she your number one choice right now? She's not number one, but she's in the top five. And I must say that I've always have a, had a fascination for and, and great respect for doctors. Huh. She is, um, I think she's a GYN, and she's well-rounded, well-traveled, well-educated, all this stuff. Um, also, and I don't have my file right in front of me, but I do have a smattering of various shades women. I think one of the women is a mother, but clearly, based on her description of her career and stuff, able to handle her business with her kid, while okay. you while you and she, if you really like her, if you want to run off to Jamaica for a weekend or something, she's not going to have all those kind of issues. Well, you know, I love kids, Wendy. You know, I'm the kind of person who's going to end up with a uh, big family, whether I have a couple of kids or also uh, maybe down the road also adopt a couple of kids. Look at this, everybody's sake. Look at Carlos. Look at my Carlos. I, well, I come from a big family. Remember, I've got, I come from a family of four. Both my parents have six and seven kids, so yeah. I like kids. I've got the best niece and nephew in the world, so one of these days, you know, I've got to have some of my own. You know what? One thing I never asked you, um, but a lot of women have described to me their perfect date. What is your perfect date? What's my perfect date? Um, it's Okay, look. It's Saturday. It's a beautiful day all day. It's it's the middle of May. Tonight you have a date. Or today you have a date. What are you going to do? All right. So first of all, we're starting early in the morning with a great morning. And we surprise each other, one person or the other. And we found... Some great little brunch place to go to uh, okay. in New York, okay. and 
Nine of us have been there before, but, you know, we may have found it in the Village Voice or somewhere else interesting. Okay. We go, we try it. It turns out that it's amazing. It's everything that we wanted. Um, so that's a great way to start off. Then, then, and I hope she's okay with this, then she gives me a minute because I go off to play basketball because, Wendy, you know I love to play basketball. Okay. But better yet, she's meeting her girlfriends or maybe she's going to play basketball or maybe she's going running or she's going to do something. So, so we mix that up a little bit, and I like that we're together and we can be apart, and that whole thing's good. Um, we get back together again, and maybe, you know, it's the summer. There's a nice New York street fair. Okay. Um, maybe we go and we check that out. Um, from there, a couple of good friends, and, uh, and oh, I like this one. The, I, like to, I like to cook. I used to be the family cook growing up. Now, I'm not a great cook anymore. Okay. Um, maybe we cook together. I'm willing to experiment a little bit, try some different ethnic foods. Maybe it's Pakistani food, it's Afghan food, it's Cajun food, it's, it's something different. Cook, we invite some people over, which is real nice. Um, what does that take the pressure off the first date by having um, your friends around? Um, I guess I wasn't thinking of it just as a first date. You were just kind of asking me what would be kind of a really nice date. Yeah, you oh, yeah, you're the, right. You're right, I was. Well, you're, you're saying the first date? Yeah, um, I, was thinking, I was thinking a reg, a regular date, but somehow I got first date in there because I'm looking for you to try to, you know, bring some of your friends in to size her up. I'm thinking that's oh, the Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no, I don't need a friend to size her up. Because that would be my and, angle. Between you and me, we can figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what would I do? So if it was just the first date, we would, um, I'd pick her up. Maybe we would uh, hit one of those street fairs. Um, uh, so we'd start up maybe a little bit later in the day. Yeah. Uh, then we'd go for something to eat. Maybe we'd try something a little bit different when he likes fondue. Have you ever been to a fondue restaurant? No, but I've seen on Sex in the City. I love them. Listen, is, is sex on a first date the worst thing a woman could possibly do regarding him? No, 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 no. I'm I the anti-rules person. Okay, I like it. I, I, I believe that life is short. We've got to enjoy it. And if something feels like the right thing to do, then do it. If it feels like the wrong thing to do, don't do it. Okay, I love um, it. I love but, it. But you, you, you can't have one size fits all. That, at least for me, that doesn't make sense. It's, so. it's, it's Carlos, everybody. Now listen, to win a date with Carlos <clears throat> through the experience, we've already locked down Nicole's email here at WBLS.com. Don't email there anymore. However, you can go to um, Ebony online for Ebony Magazine. Ebony online and enter. And we're closing those entries down I believe in the next week. I'll check on you and come back to the radio and let you know. And then we're going to narrow it down to five and then hopefully three women. I'm just going so crazy. There are such qualified women in this city. I mean, when you ask for cream of the crop when, you, when you're dealing with a good bachelor, you really, I mean, the chicken heads just know to fall back. And <laughs> you got a nice quality of women to the point where the women that we don't pick, because obviously not everyone can be picked for this, I'm keeping your emails because we might want to include you in on something where we need a great crop of women in the future. They're great, oh, Carlos. Thank you so much for calling. Hey, Wendy, you know I love joining you. I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Thank you, darling. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. Everybody, Advice Hour is coming up next hour, and um, I got a few things to cover with you. Um, plus, are you into the personal ads, men, women? Do you ever want to ask a further what somebody means when they say emotionally secure? Because, according to my dictionary, that means on medication. I got this funny list of deciphering personal ads. Keep it here. I'll do it during advice hour. Plus, your snafus, too. It's windy, man. My boss came into my office, and uh, he basically brushed up against me with his penis. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know what, what how, can I, how should I handle that situation? <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. I'm having a Advice problem out. with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm-hmm. Williams. You know, the way she dresses, she's a businesswoman. She's very intelligent, but, I mean, are people going to take her seriously? The Wendy Williams Experience.
All righty, everybody. <clears throat> it's advice hour on the Wendy Williams experience. But before we get to your letters, I would like to acknowledge um, that song, Change Your Wicked Ways. There are a few music nieces in the audience. Ralph Chavez knew that it was uh, by Penny Ford. Thank you, Ralph. And <clears throat> Daniel Howard knew that Change Your Wicked Ways was by Penny Ford, too. Shout out to Music Man. <clears throat> In Columbia, South Carolina, Music Man knew that it was not just Penny Ford on Change Your Wicked Ways, but that she's the same vocalist on the song Power by Snap with the sample from Jocelyn Brown. Jeez, Music Man, you do know a lot. And I hear tell that Fantasia Barino was on The uh, View this morning. This person didn't sign their name to their fax, but they said um, it's evident, Wendy, that, she, that Fantasia got the memo because homegirl got braces instead of tricking up her cash on Gucci bags. Isn't that fabulous? No, she's getting it together. She's getting it together. Go, Fantasia, go. There's a lot of stuff that you can do when they, you know, say, okay, you got you have a budget and you can go out and, and you know, do something. I went shopping today. You know, my project comes out on June 28th, and I'm getting ready to do 106 and Park and Rip the Runway, and I don't know what else they have me <clears throat> from at Virgin Records going on. But it's, like, weird, you know what I'm saying? we got to take you out for clothes. Now, I don't mind clothes, but I'm like, for what? They said, because you're going to be doing TV appearances. I said, but I get... Oh. Oh, wait a minute now. And then we went to a neighborhood to that I'm totally not familiar with. I said, look, I am totally 34th Street and higher. You know, 34th Street to 57th Street, maybe up to about 60th Street because that's where Bloomingdale's is. That's, this is my part of Manhattan. You know, I, I shopped the Fifth Avenue. I shopped the Saks. I shopped the, shopped the Bergdorf. Anything below 34th Street, like I'm a stranger to that. And we shopped all downtown. I went to Arden B. And we went to some, look at all my bags. Art, you see seven hangers yes. and two little bags with, that have some a, a, cute, a cute top in each bag. Seven hangers and two bags. Right. Yeah, fun. Somebody else was doing the buying. I was oh. shopping on the Virgin Credit Card. Oh. This is my appearance clothes in here. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah, right. I, I go on TV. I go to my go-to rack for Virgin. There you go. All right. So um, it's different being an artist, you know, because I was like, well, damn, I think this is the part of um, um, being an artist where a lot of artists go wrong. Like instead of, you know, maybe getting clothes, do they take the, you know, do, do they insist on going right over and getting some ice? You know, like if you have this money, what can you do with it? Yeah. You go get ice, you go get Gucci bags. The problem with um, the Gucci bags is that you don't carry them on camera and sit them next to AJ while you're talking to AJ and Free. You know what I mean? So what's the point in that? So I had to stay focused. And, you know, if in a perfect world to me, in real life, everything would be black, white, and denim. I love jeans. And then I put on um, either a black top or a white top. Every once in a while, I'll do something different, you know, to zhuzh it up. But really? And pink is my favorite color, but not to wear like on an everyday. It's a beautiful day, you know, today. Uh, you know, not to... Eh. But for TV, black and white are very boring. So I found myself, if you could see through the filminess of the bags... There's colors in there. I see green. Yeah, there's green. There's a lot of pink and, you know, like that. Shout out to Leote. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, um, but yeah, that's good that Fantasia um, is getting her um, teeth together. About Jennifer Lopez's hair. Okay, I'm about to present you in the room with the picture of her hair. I just think her hair makes her nose look well, more pronounced. Like, you, she needs to go maybe back in for another nose job or it's a cute nose if she wants to stay natural, but apparently since she got one the first time, she's into making her nose smaller. I like Brittany Murphy's new hair. Have you seen her hair? Brittany Murphy has um, dark chocolate hair, Zeta Jones style. And, and she's got long extensions that cup her breasts. And it looks like she might have gotten a little nose job. I don't know. But Brittany Murphy, it looks really cute. And also, I, I still like Nikki Hilton's um, brown hair with the blue eyes. I still like that look on her. I saw Latifa recently. She took the blonde out of her hair. It was just chocolate brown like Zeta Jones. It looked really nice. I mean, she had a, about five inches off to finish the length and all like that. Um, Tony Braxton just came in the studio. Still the best looking woman when it comes to either no hair or hair down the back. She just can do that. Halle Berry is not like Tony to me. I I, I like Halle Berry best with the cro short cropped Halle hair. And Pinkett Smith. I like her best with the short cropped hair 
my thing with that is that it brings out a more masculine side of her, though. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that the longer hair on Pinkett Smith, even though the shorter looks better, the longer softens her attitude and her jawline and it takes away a little bit of the masculinity that, you know, she sometimes, you know, is evident to all of us. That's all. Um, and Tyra Banks, the red hair, I was never particularly caring for it. I, I don't, I, I'm not particularly caring for it. That's all. Anyway, and with that in mind, I'll pass around, I'll pass over to Art, uh, J-Lo's new Bonnie and Clyde hairstyle. Now, see that hair, Art, you look like you smell something. In other words, you don't like it. I don't like it on her. Hollywood, what do you think? It's all right. Zoe, come. Look. She looks a little older now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, say. It's not, it's not sexy, Jay. It's, it, <laughs> anyway. Oh, and Zellweger got married over the weekend. Does anybody give a damn? No. Okay. She, anyway, she married um, the country star Kenny Chesney. Do you know him? Neither do I. They got married on St. John in the Virgin Islands, a 15-minute ceremony where they laughed and cried over the weekend. They met four months ago at a concert for Tsunami Relief. And this is their first marriage. So congratulations, Renee Zellweger. I'm sure every wedding picture you had that sour puss on your face. <laughs> you know how she smiles all like this. That's how she does, yeah. That's not her smile. Mm. All right, so it's advice hour. And let's get into um, the faxes. Dear Wendy, I'm tired of faxing your ass. I'm a 27-year-old woman. My husband's 31. And I just found out. Now, mind you, woman, a lot of your facts got cut off on the right side of the page, but I'm trying to fill in the blanks. I just found out that my husband has been communicating with his ex. And when I approached him, he didn't say something about it. I don't believe he's cheating on me, but I didn't even make a big deal of it. I just called my ex, who'd been inquiring about my whereabouts. Yeah. Wendy, my question is, am I wrong? Should I just do me? No cheating madness because I don't rock like that, but I should continue to communicate with my ex or friendship level or because it's what my husband's doing or what? FYI, we dated for four years and we're having a blank, oh, a 10th wedding anniversary in July, her and her husband. Um, or it might be two years. It's probably two. I have no kids, but he does. I don't like communicating with any exes. This is a really dangerous water that you're treading with a tit for tat. It's nice to know that you can pick up your phone and communicate with your ex as a tit for tat. But... Um, I think what you need to do is approach your husband on why it is that he has to communicate with his ex. I just think it brings up too much stuff. I don't care if your ex got hit by a car and now has, you know, one limb on each side of the body and a twisted face and, and a puss like Renee Zellweger. <laughs> it's the idea. The soul is still the same. You know, you were in love with that soul at one point, And you know what? No, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. If there are no kids. And ex what? Ex-boyfriend or ex husband you know what it doesn't even matter you didn't mention kids i'm assuming there are no kids that he has with his ex i don't like it and i understand the tit for tat but if we could just mature up for just a moment that's not a good idea either and and you know what you and your husband's um anniversary none of these exes should be involved you know uh, demi moore asked bruce willis to be ashton kutcher's one of the best men up there Groomsman? yes <laughs> and ashton is like do you see, Demi, this is a part of my complaint about Bruce even looming over this relationship. And he's all in. First of all, second of all, this is as much my wedding as it is your wedding. And I picked my own groomsman. And I don't want Bruce to be a groomsman. To, uh, personally speaking, I don't see a need for Bruce to be at the wedding. You know, it's Ashton who's going to be the stuff. It's just uh, too, you know, just too much. And I understand Demi and Bruce are still doing each other or whatever, in my mind. <laughs> And fine. I mean, it's not fine, but for that, fine. But can we not have Bruce standing up in front, or for that matter, in the back catering or anywhere on the premises? Can we have all exes fall back, whether they're children or not, involved? Her kids are old enough to tell Bruce I don't like him or he's touching me in the wrong way. So they what? 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 Yeah, and they love uh, Ashton. So why does Bruce need to be around? To me, you're starting something. You're already treating the boy like a child. It's bad enough you've told all of America that the only problem with a younger man like Ashton is that the sex is quick. <gasps> exactly. 
I mean, there are assumptions that we can make, but you know what? You don't need to be talking about them. This is not some man that you're jumping off with for a week or even something that fell out of your mouth after dating him for only two months. This is your man that we were all to believe until yesterday when I read uh, the, the quote from his grandmother, uh, the older, the elder Mrs. Kusher, said that there is no baby, you know, and that all the hubbub is about them getting married. Dear Wendy, I'm in a relationship with a man that I've known all my life. I love him. I really do. The problem is that he has sugar diabetes. He's starting to go through some things, Wendy. He recently found out that he's losing his vision, and I'm very sorry for him. I really am. The problem is I've been with him for two years. He's rude to my family. He hasn't had a real job since we've been together. He hangs out all the time with people who are about nothing, doing nothing, and things that he shouldn't do. I'm a single parent of an eight-year-old boy. Wendy, I work full-time. I have a... Co- I am a full-time college college student as well. I feel like I can't leave now because his present situation, I love him, but I I don't want to resent him. What should I do? Well, honey child, you're not willing to do what I would say to do because you already said you wouldn't do it. So now what are you going to do? You're going to sit and lay in the bed that you're making for yourself. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd put on my Nikes, lace them up real tight, open up the door, and be sprinting. (laughs) Excuse me? You bailing. That's right. Now, don't let your blindness blind me from looking at what's best for my future with me and my eight-year-old who you're not the father of. Man, I've been with you for two years. For two years, you've had time to earn uh, whether to earn um, keeping me through blindness and through sickness and through health. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm not even teetering on staying with a blind boyfriend of two years who's not my baby's father. I'm not even teetering on it. What? Oh. Not in this situation? He hasn't had a job since what? I'm talking about her situation. Right, right. He hasn't had a job since what? He hangs out with guys who do what? Nothing. Why am I going to stay having my son see all this? And did you, did you peep this? He is rude to my family and he hasn't had a re- What? Mm. Why are you even writing me, sucker, please? Don't sit around like a sucker. Lace up your Nikes, pack your backpack, and bail. And buy him a cane and just leave that hooked on the mailbox. So you, you know, you don't have to feel fully bad. That's it. You can be so heartless at times. <laughs> at times? All the time. Do you want to know what? I, it's, more, it's more than about me. It's about I have an eight-year-old son, and he's eight. And I'm not rearranging my furniture for a blind boyfriend who I've been with for two years and hasn't done anything to show me that once he fully goes blind, he's, he's still a keeper. He hasn't had a job seeing. So what do you think he's going to do when he's blind? <laughs> okay. What if he has the magic stick? Whatever. Oh. Then I'll buy a cane for me and a cane for him. Oh. And if I got to wrap it with something thicker to really fill things up, I will. And you got out a cucumber, put it on the end of a cane. There you go. And let me do me. In the meantime, don't bump into the couch on your way out. <laughs> I'm gone. So are you. I only have 30 seconds. Look, when we come back, I got another uh, couple of faxes. And I'm doing the dictionary for personal ads. When she says... Men, what does she really mean? Okay? These personal ads, it's a fabulous way of dating. But you got to know what you're getting into. you got to be able to read between the lines. I'm going to help the men out. And ladies, you all too. Keep it here. Wendy, men. First of all, my question is, what's wrong with Fantasia? I guess maybe I'm wondering why no one wants to focus on Fantasia's talent. I mean, Because nobody can get past her team. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> all right. 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B. Mm, classic soul. And the square peg in the round hole. That's the Wendy Williams experience, all right? How are you, everybody, today? It's a beautiful day in New York City. A special shout-out to Jersey City. Do you want to know what? On Friday night, I forgot to tell you, um, excuse me, Saturday afternoon, about Little Miss Nana's birthday party. You know, that's my um, my young rapsters friend. She just turned 14, and her party was on um, Saturday at Brokers. And it was earlier during the day, um, like four, four, maybe like four to eight. You know, the kids were dancing in there. The kids, you know, ranged in age from like maybe nine to, well, then the moms were in there. So, you know, nine to 39, you know, 50. Um, and you, my special 
Remember I was telling you I was going to give her a special uh, gift and it was a person with a television show and a platinum artist, Marcus Houston. And I actually walked in the party with my gift. It was really something. Yeah. We went by and, and got him at the airport and then, you know, his truck, you know, followed behind our car. And so we all arrived together and, and Nana was on stage because, you know, she's a rapper. So she performed, you know, at her own party. Why not? And there's a door right to backstage at Brokers, the nightclub in East Orange. So literally when you open up that door, you're on stage, baby. So we opened up the back door. And I come on stage first because Marcus, you know, is behind us. And, um, you know, they were very receptive, you know, the kids. And then Marcus came on stage behind me. They went buck wild. <laughs> what? You're 14 years old and you get Marcus Houston for your birthday. Oh, yeah, that's big. Isn't that huge? He's got his show Cuts on TV. His new CD Naked is in stores on May 24th. Plus, he's been in all the, you know, he was on Sister to Sister. And, you know, he's starved. Batman, ba IMX. IMX? Forget about it. So I would imagine that little Miss Nana had like the best day in school yesterday and she's probably still glowing from it. That birthday gift right there will probably carry her through the rest of the summer. Her life. Or perhaps her life. At the very least until she finishes matriculating in the Newark school system. Because that got around fast, I'm sure. And there were people there to actually witness it. Marcus came on stage. Nana was in the middle of her 16 bars. What'd she do? Next thing you... Oh, she... You know what? She's so cool that, you know, I almost wanted to pop her in her 14-year-old head. I was expecting her to fall out and stuff like that. But you know what? She was cool about it. You know, she was cooler than I could have been about it. I would have lost it all, cr all crazy like if it was actually me. Yes. But she's a star too, though. So. She is a star. And guess what? In true star, star form, they threw his song on and he did... Um, his song, All Because of You. So he, he did just a couple of lines from his song. And then, because she's an MC, uh -oh. she just grabbed 16 bars out of the air. No. And they did a remix. No, so not. here's All Because of You. Then they kept it playing. And she went, A book, a book, a book, a book, a book, a book, a book. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what? And then here he picks up, because he's a professional. All Because of You. Ah, 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 ah. I want to do right. And I was on stage dancing with my son. My son was crying because everybody was being loud. He was jealous. Everybody was calling everybody else's name but his. They didn't, you know, <laughs> people with their camera phones just for a day. Everybody got a pass. Yeah. You know, people just said they didn't know who the camera phone, though. Marcus Houston standing there. He got all the film usage, camera lining it up, you know. <laughs> yep, yep, they went just like this. Oh, as soon as the backstage door opened, it's like the DJ knew. You know what I mean? And here's Nana's on stage, and, and, and Marcus Houston, and happy 14th birthday, little Miss Nana. It was crazy. And the parents were receptive. And you know, parents, I'm a parent myself. I know I would have been going crazy if I brought my kid to a party and Marcus Houston showed up. So the parents were going crazy. The little girls were going crazy. And, and he's a perfect age, Marcus Houston is. Because, you know, if you're 14, you know, you're feeling Marcus Houston sexually. But if you're 40, you're also looking at him like, honey, ch like, like Paula to Corey. You know what I'm saying? Like Demi to Ashton. So he was being felt by everybody in the room. Plus, he's Marcus Houston's no punk, so he was getting gap from the nuts in the room and and being looked up to by the little boys in the room. It was like crazy, and then he's just singing his song. Ah, did he mingle in the crowd? Yeah, no, he didn't mingle in the crowd. He, he sat at a banquet. We all sat at a banquet, um, and then he went back out the same way. But he was there for a good amount of time and signing autographs and do, everybody had their picture phone. The smart ones had their Comcast VCast phones, a 15 second movie. You could have been taking a movie of it, but if you know, if you don't check out um, um, Verizon, they, the VCast, what did I say? Comcast, that's the cable. <laughs> Verizon, and the Verizon's the cell phone, but it was, it was absolutely unbelievable and Marcus did not show up with entourage of people. He had one of his homeboys who was about his size. So I don't know, you know, whether it was a bodyguard because, you know, you don't have to size up to be a bodyguard these days. You just have to know the right, you know, um, moves, whether it's that you go to Taekwondo or, you carry know, something. or you're carrying right something or, yeah, I didn't want to say that because we were around <laughs> the kids. I hate to think that, you know, that was, but all I'm saying is that he wasn't with, like, a whole group of people. He was with one other dude and his a little homie dude, like, like his size. Yeah. It was just really hot. So happy birthday, little Miss Nana. I hope you loved your birthday gift. She did.
I mean, and Marcus Houston was so cool about it. And he's just, you know, and just he's right there in that sexy zone where he could please everybody. Oh, yeah. You know, well, he does. So don't and 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 don't forget. Um, he's got a single on my CD, um, which is how he's part of my fam. He, yeah, he's part of the fam. You know, he he gave me a nice song, that naked song for for my CD. Wendy Williams brings the heat. Naked happens to be the title of his um, album too, which comes out on May twenty fourth. So if this single right here is on it. I I, I want to do right. Oh. Woo! just a fun and then you know what and when they opened the back door and we went back outside the sun was still up because it was like seven, six or seven o'clock at night yeah. just a beautiful a beautiful scene yeah it was a beautiful it was a beautiful scene i say all that to say what's up jersey <laughs> jersey city on saturday something's going down with you marcus houston's not going to be there but it's a four o'clock and it's a basketball game with the wbls sure shots jersey city um, our short shots are taking on the Panther Ballers at PS39 in Jersey City. That's at 214 Plainfield Avenue. And the pro... It does sound lackluster compared to Marcus Houston showing up at a birthday party, doesn't it? I need to save this for another time. I'm sorry, short shots. But if Marcus Houston's not going to be at the ball game, all of a sudden it just... I'm sorry. Proceeds of the game benefit uh, the parent team organization. It's brought to you by Sierra Mist. I love Sierra Mist and your radio station keeping you connected with your community. So Jersey City, that's Saturday at 4 o'clock. Don't forget that The um, over at PS39. A little activity for springtime pleasure. Oh, and one more thing for me to tell you about. Two more things. Do I have time? LA Weight Loss. LA Weight Loss. I should probably do LA Weight Loss now. Okay. LA Weight Loss. What more can I say? I dropped like 17 pounds. My energy is up. Woo! You know what I mean? It's so great. I went shopping today. A couple of the tops, they didn't have larges. I said, you know what? I can do a medium. Is there Lycra in this? Okay, fine. I'm not feeling as crazy about it. And, oh, gosh. I don't know whether this was the right thing to do. But when I was buying my stuff for TV today, I did something that I don't normally like to do for TV because, you know, I've got wings right here. You know, I got the wings right here under my arms. You know, if I had some scissors and a big Band-Aid, I would take care of myself. So I'm not big on, um, like in nightclubs, it's one thing because the, the lights are low and I'll be sleeveless. And, you know, nobody's looking at arm fat. You know, And besides, I've learned how to control myself where I'm not throwing my hands in the air and waving like I just don't care because I'll be knocking people over. But I bought... I bought um, halters, nothing with sleeves, for um, for my um, album promotions. I don't know whether I did the right thing. Maybe I'm going a little overboard with my L.A. weight loss cockiness. But I lost the 15 pounds, 17 to be exact, a year ago. And I haven't gained any of the weight back. So I feel in my mind... Regardless of what it might look like authentically, I feel in my mind like I might, if I don't do sleeveless now on TV, then when in life am I going to do it? This is probably the thinnest I'll ever be, and I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Besides, I know, I'll know i know how to position myself so you don't get a, a full-on view of my arms. 106 in Park, though, it'll be difficult because you know how you have to sit on a side angle and they, you know, you can see the arms. But I'm thinking if I do my hair a little extra long, then I can create a, a veil of hair <laughs> or something. Anyway, L, thank you, L.A. Weight Loss, for not reminding me of all the fat angles that there are out there because there's so many fat angles that you just, you know, if you spend your life concentrating on fat angles, you'll forget to deliver the funny. And that's what I do. I deliver the funny. And I was getting so distracted, even like with VH1 and stuff, getting so distracted with fat angles, I would literally be in mid-conversation, forget what I was saying to the person I'm interviewing because I'm wondering whether it's a fat angle going on. Now, I... I, I Thank you, LA Weight Loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. Spring is here. You might be looking for um, a reasonable way to slim down. They are affordable. Uh, it's maintainable for the rest of your life and easy to follow because it's real food. No pills, no, nothing packaged. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's LA Weight Loss. They are fabulous. All righty, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. And, um, you know... For those of you who are 
single and wish to actively date. I am all for the personal ads. I'm all for internets. Um, I'm on the fence regarding office romance just because very often you find that both parties are not mature enough to deal with it when there's fallout or when you're broken up or when you're fighting or when the sex isn't good or when you're talking to the next person in the next booth. You know, when you move on, it just, it's too many complications in office romances, but office is still the best place to meet people. Isn't that terrible to say? But it's terrible to say. All right, so here's a dictionary for women's personal ads. Men, this is for you. When a woman says, and this is very funny too, I got this off um, the internet. When a woman says she's 40-ish, that means she's 49. Damn. When a woman says she's adventurous, that means she slept with everyone. When a woman says she's athletic, that means she's got no breasts. Mm. I never thought of it that way, but you want to know what? Is there something to this? I could never imagine. Well, then again, I'm not athletic, but I, maybe. Or maybe it, that could mean a bunch of things. Calluses, no nails. Like if you if you like nails, then maybe that means, you know, she, I don't know. She doesn't wear makeup. Is that what that means? I don't know. There's, these are there's, these are stereotypes. These aren't hard and fast. I'm really really reading these for your chuckalation more than anything. When a woman says she's average looking, that means she's ugly. When a woman says she's beautiful, that means she's a pathological liar. When she says she has a contagious smile, uh, that means that she does a lot of pills. That's funny. When she says she's emotionally secure, that means she's on medication. When she says she's a feminist, that means she's fat. Hmm. Or bisexual? Or athletic? <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a whole... Or no nails or no makeup or no... You know. Uh, I don't, when she says she's a free spirit, that means she's a junkie. <laughs> when she says friendship first, that means she's a former slut. Yeah, it is the sluts who make the make the hardest rules. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and they got religion. You know what I mean? Or something. They turn 30. They realize that the sluttery is no good anymore. And I say they because, you know, mother has lived. <laughs> uh, when they say they're fun, that means they're annoying. Okay. When they say they're new age, that means that they have body hair in the wrong places. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, new age. Yeah, that's a good one. When they say they're old-fashioned, that means no BJs, no professionals. When they say they're open-minded, that means they're desperate. Hmm? When they say they're outgoing, uh, men, that means that they're loud and embarrassing. When they say that they're passionate, that means they're a sloppy drunk. <laughs> when a woman says in her personal ads that she's professional, that means she's a bitch. When she says that she's voluptuous, that means very fat. When she says she's large frame or big bone, that means she's hugely fat. And when she says she wants a soulmate, that means she's a stalker. <laughs> and in women's English, yes means no and no means yes, men. And maybe means no. And when a woman says you're certainly attentive tonight, that means is sex all you ever think about yes <laughs> hey, hey ladies here's what the men mean though here's your translation this is not for the uh for um personal ads this is just in regular life when a man says he's hungry that means he's hungry when he says he's sleepy that means he's sleepy and when he says he's tired that means he's tired when he says nice dress, that means nice cleavage. <laughs> yeah. When he says I love you, that means let's have sex now. Hi. <laughs> and when a man lady says I'm bored, that means do you want to have sex? <laughs> when a man says to you, may I have this dance, that's, that means he's saying I'd like to have sex with you. When he says, can I call you sometime? That means I'd like to have sex with you. <laughs> when he says, do you want to go to the movies? That means I'd like to have sex with you. When he says, can I take you out for dinner? That means I'd like to have sex with you. And when he says, I don't think those shoes go with that outfit. That means I'm gay. I'm a homo. I like guys. <laughs> Dear Wendy, I need your help. I just started a new position at the end of the at the end of last month. And it's with a pretty big music corporation. Well, Wendy, I'm 17 weeks pregnant. Ooh. Which I knew way before the interview. I'm not showing. And for the most part, the morning sickness has passed away. My question is, when should I inform my supervisor? Oh, my gosh. 
big. At the same time, he informs you that uh, this is not what he was betting on for this new position, and so here's your pink slip. And then you inform your attorney that you're suing, and it becomes really ugly. Why do women do this? Because we need to work. That's why. That's why. And if we could be more forthright with future employers, then maybe, you know, it, it wouldn't have to be sneakery and trickery. Uh, you know, I, I was going to wait for two more weeks. What do you suggest? Also, at um, also, what brand of shoe did you find most comfortable during your pregnancy? I'm a size 10, 11. Sign Prego. Flip flops. I was on bed rest. I left. I was able to stand up 15 minutes a day. I didn't spend two of those minutes looking for some damn shoes in my closet. I let the calluses grow. And my husband would treat me. He found, um, well, he didn't find. I found um, somebody to come in and do my feet and nails, you know, on a regular basis in the, in the house. And I would leave the house once a week. I'd go to the doctors in flip flops, sometimes just socks, sometimes barefoot. Because literally, I was just going into the car and then going right into the doctor's office. And my file was red, which means I never sat in the waiting room. You know what a red file means at the GYN? That means put this woman in right now. On one hand, it scared the daylights out of me because that means red rhymes with, you know, <laughs> you know exactly. You know, and I've been through that. But on the other hand, I, I love the snobbery. I love the, the queendom of waltzing in the <laughs> office and never sitting down in the waiting room, you know, with everybody else. But just ushering my red behind into the, you know, everything was code red, code red, code red. You know. Um, so I didn't, I didn't deal with shoes. I couldn't even tell you. And as far as this, if it's a, with a pretty big, oh, damn, he's giving me one minute, but this is extremely important. You know what? I'm going to uh, go to our flagship station, WBLS. I'm going to go around and talk to Tina Allen, who's in personnel, because I would love to have a professional's opinion on this situation. I know. I never like to go in there. You know, because she's, she's the holder of the pink slips, doggone it. <laughs> and Tina, I'm coming in to ask you about this woman. Uh-oh. Because right now, all I see is pink. Even through even through the sensitivity of no, you know what I mean. Even though we dealt with this here on the experience, it's true. You know, and that's why Nicole is um, filling in, booking in. While Elisa, the actual person who was hired to book the show, is on maternity, and Lisa, Elisa was only here at the show for maybe two months before she told us, "I'm pregnant," and. You know, then we we stayed through the pregnancy, and then she, she's she been out on maternity leave now for like three months. But her job is safe, and she's back. But then again, this is the little engine that could versus a big conglomerate. You know, we can we can make those homegrown decisions here on The Experience. I'm going to go to talk to Tina and Allen. I'll be back. It's windy, man. I'm constantly sleeping with my baby's daddy. He is engaged to get married to someone else. Should I give it all up and say... Well, I tried to have a relationship here. You can't have a relationship. He's engaged to somebody else. He's about to get married. Really, I just can't take it. The Wendy Williams Experience.